I'm Savannah Burley. Great. And what is today's date? November 4th. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is your name? Savannah. Great. And what is today's date? 16th. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> what is your character in the play? I play Percy, which uh, the story is a super stereotypical melodrama. So there's this charming prince who has to save a princess from a castle, and the princess is uh, being, uh, <laughs> she's kidnapped by this villain. So there's a villain, the princess, and the prince charming, and Percy is the prince in the story. Oh, fun! <laughs> Very exciting. He is the protagonist of the story. He's the hero who ends up saving Angela uh, from Lord Osmond. Yeah, good. Um, so how do you feel about the play currently? Oh my gosh, it's, okay, it's really cool working with uh, students from every grade in order to create this production. It's been a lot of fun, there's been a lot of support, and it's a super positive environment. Uh, it's a little bit chaotic, but it's organized chaos, as I would like to uh, call it. And it's getting to the point where everything's clicking, and all of the gears are kind of moving with each other. And we're going from a bunch of amateurs who have no clue what they're, do what they're doing to uh, a group of kids who are super excited to put on the performance. Um, so how do you feel about the play after doing it, and like, were there any things like hiccups or anything? <sighs> <laughs> there were so many hiccups, but everyone improv and handled them so, so well. It was a lot of fun because it was like organized chaos. So there was always something going on. Uh, there was some, you know, sort of mistake that we had to overcome and we, we nailed it every single time. It was so, it was so much fun. That's great. Nice. That's really cool. So what do you think is like the most chaotic part of it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's quite a few. Um, I think there's a couple scenes where everyone's talking over each other and there's sword fights going on or there's some uh, there's some action or blocking that is super complicated and everyone's in the scene. Um, so I think just uh, you know running lines at the right time but being in the right places and <laughs> doing all of the sword fighting and dramatic over exaggerated action that needs to be done. I think that's the most chaotic thing. <laughs> Last time you also talked about organized chaos, so do you think that like that was also perceived by the audience? Or do you think that that was like perceived by organized chaos? Yeah. Like, oh. I really hope that it was, because I feel like that's part of the um, that's part of the performance that makes it feel authentic and real, and it adds to the comedic effect. So <laughs> nice. Okay, so okay, so what do you think will be the hardest part when you're presenting the play? Ooh. I'm not sure. I think collaborating with uh, everyone on stage can be kind of difficult, uh, especially given that everyone has to focus on both remembering their lines and being in the right spot, and kind of working together can be a difficulty. <laughs> but I think that the community there is amazing. The theater community is awesome, and so I think that people are going to have a lot of fun working with each other. And, Nice. We'll get to that. <laughs> okay. What was the hardest part about the play? A hard scene or like choreography in general? Oh, I don't know. I think that, like I said, any part that we made a mistake in, we were able to cover it up through improv and it just added more layers. I think that a difficult scene probably, again, um, would have been the first insert when we're doing the gesture dance because the timing is super difficult to <laughs> you know to match every single um, person pretty you know to some extent uh, and the timing can get difficult and I think that and the third act scene when everyone's talking over each other is my favorite scene but also one of the most complicated. Yeah, definitely. So how do you think this play will be perceived by the audience? I don't know what you want to say. This play, uh, although it is organized chaos and it is supposed to be funny and over exaggerated, I think that uh, there's a lot of deeper meaning kind of behind it, uh, where we are <laughs> an amateur ragtag group of kids putting on a performance, a uh, high school performance, um, but it dives a little bit deeper into the meaning of theater and why people perform, even though it is such as obscure. Uh, in the play, we use the word mendacious thing to do. Uh, it's so strange, and yet uh, people do it every day, and that's going to be incorporated into our performances. Why we do that? Nice. Uh, I think that's a really nice message to take away as well. 
Um, so, okay, so how do you think the play was received by the audience? I got a lot of feedback. I think that people found it really fun and chaotic, and I, that personally was what I hoped the audience perceived it as, is something kind of fun and a nice little transition from having no shows for two years to going back into oh yes theater. Um, <laughs> it was a really, I think that it was just like a fun little, you know, a fun little performance. And I, it was fast, speedy, uh, and the story was super chaotic and complicated. Uh, but I think that that was the point, and that's how the audience was supposed to perceive it. Nice. Last time you talked about like the theme being what the meaning of theater was, mm -hmm. or <clears throat> what it meant to be an actor. So do you think that that was also perceived by the audience? I really hope it was. There were some really, really amazing inserts by some very talented actors at OBS, where they um, it, they did really tender, tender scenes that were super interpretive, and uh, they could have been interpreted in many different ways. But I think that that's the main thing, is that all throughout this chaos, there's the underlying presence of what it means to be an actor, and why we reach out and extend ourselves is one of the lines used in the play, um, and why we make a fool of ourselves on stage. <laughs> it was the, the meme. So what is your level of stress right now going into Texas and going into this <laughs> Pretty stressful. <laughs> this is my first ever performance, oh. so I this is also new to me, and I am both extremely excited because it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but again, it's organized chaos and things are getting to the point where they're clicking, but we're not quite there yet. And so I think that uh, Tech Week is going to be, <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> quite a lot of fun. Nice. Um, okay, so, so what level of stress did you feel while doing the play? And then did you feel like relieved <laughs> after the play? I, I didn't get stage fright, which is really weird for me. I didn't feel any sort of stage fright. Um, but building up to the first performance, I was so nervous. I felt like the play hadn't quite clicked yet and that we were still super choppy and I didn't think that my lines were where they needed to be and that my performance wasn't where it needed to be. But I think, um, I mean, our first audience member was Alfredo during our first dress rehearsal. And I think just going through and getting everything figured out was a super nice process. and. After that first dress rehearsal, everything felt everything felt fine. Nice. So do you have a favorite line that would be by your character or by any other character? Ooh, there are some good lines. There are some good lines. I think uh, I don't know if I can <laughs> think of one without. I do really like uh, Osmond, Lord Osmond, villain, the villain of the character, uh, the play, and Nico's character. And he has a couple of pretty funny lines. Uh, I think one of my favorite being, I have influence at Rome, <laughs> which context will be given uh, during the performance. And uh, I do love, there's so many really good lines because everything's super exaggerated um, and all over the place. There's a lot of randomness, but it's all super cohesive. I can't think of my like, one favorite. Okay. What is your favorite line? The last time you had a line from the antagonist, so do you think there's another line that really stood mm -hmm. out during the play? I think that um, there were some good lines from the, from the inserts that um, I think I really liked the repetitive lines in the play. So the ones where it's like, oh, there mustn't be any violence. I can't stand violence. A couple of characters use that multiple times. Um, and then there was also the line, pay attention, I extend myself, that was used a couple of times. And I like those lines because uh, the play is super unorganized and chaotic. And uh, those lines that are kind of repetitive help keep the theme of the story. I don't know, I liked it. Nice. I like those. Um, um, do you have a favorite prop that you get to play with or that you get to other people play with? There is. Nizma, one of the freshmen who is playing a maid of the house, uh, has a little duster and it is the most adorable thing ever. And she sword fights with it. It's such an iconic uh, symbol of the play at this point. It's amazing. It's by far my favorite prop. That sounds great. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Last time you talked about a uh, duster being your favorite prop. Is that still one of your still, favorite Still my favorite prop. Um, I think that also there were a couple of weapons incorporated into the fight scenes, fight scenes that I think um, I should mention. One being a bagel. 
<laughs> I'm gonna put that on the list with the duster. Nice. Okay. Okay. Um, what is a really fun scene to do or to uh, be in without spoiling too much of it? Okay. There's a scene in the third act where everyone's on stage, and this is the point where I think it's also the most chaotic. Uh, and the play just gets out of control. It's back to the theme of you know amateur actors. Everything kind of falls apart at the seams, and everyone's ev like all over the place. But, and it is so much fun to be part of that, and everyone's talking over each other, and there's so much that uh, happens in that one short little scene, and it's fantastic. It's so much fun to perform. Um, what was one of your favorite scenes to have done? The castle scene, where I fall from a tower in slow motion. I get to yell and... <laughs> <laughs> At the top of my lungs while I fall slowly from a ladder. I've always dreamed of doing that. Nice. Um, how confident are you feeling in the play, in your acting, and in general? <laughs> Not, I think that everything is going to work itself out, and I have confidence in that. But at the moment, my confidence is kind of like, you know, <laughs> it's there, but... <laughs> Not where it could be, nice. but it'll we'll figure it out. We'll get there. So how confident did you feel while you were doing the play, and then how confident did Tech Week make you feel? Uh, like during rehearsal versus yeah. Tech Week? Okay. During rehearsal, I think it, I, I felt less coordinated, but I felt like it was a little bit less stressful. And during Tech Week, I felt more coordinated, but I felt like there was another layer of stress that wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think... Tech Week was so worth it at the end. We got everything figured out, but I think definitely Tech Week was more stressful. Nice, and then did you feel confident going into the play, like opening night and then versus closing, closing night? I think that it depended on the day, actually, because there were days where I was like up and ready to go. I felt so excited to be on stage, and there were days where I was so tired and exhausted, and I wanted to participate, but I didn't feel like I had the energy that I needed to, and so I really think it depends that it depended on the days. Uh, who inspired you to A, be in the play and B, the character that you were playing? Yeah. Um, I was sitting with my advisor, Mitch, and a couple of my friends in my advisory. And when we were choosing activities, uh, we read this email sent out about, oh, join in the play. You don't need to have any experience. And uh, we were like, Let's audition, you know. It could be super fun. It could be a, a really cool opportunity. And so we all signed up together and, you know, we were, um, we went into auditions with each other and it was a lot of fun. That sounds great. So who inspired you for this play? I remember you talking about your inspiration for getting into the play, but was there anyone who inspired you for your character later on during the Um, I feel like I, I actually didn't really know how I was supposed to play my character because I found other actors were adding their own bits and pieces into their stage presence. And this is my first performance and I wasn't super comfortable or I didn't know how to go about that yet. And I think that as I continued, I got some feedback from Emily and Colsey and Pete uh, and my peers who were helping me perform. And eventually I was kind of able to find that inspiration throughout all of the supporters and the people who were helping me figure all of that out. Nice to add on to that. So last uh, time we talked, you said that you were like an amateur actor coming into this and how that's reflected in the play in the theme itself. So do you do you think that uh, you can you still identify yourself as an amateur actor now? I still think I'm pretty amateur, but I think this, this experience has been, um, it's been a good learning experience and a good learning curve because now I can, um, I, I understand, I have a feel for acting, and I understand that it is something that I would like to continue as an extracurricular, um, and I have a little bit more experience, and I think at the end of the day, it's putting yourself in front of an audience and just putting your best effort into it, and I think all of the technical stuff, you know, comes along with that as you progress as an actor, and I still consider myself extremely amateur, but I feel a little bit more experienced now. Nice, great. Thank you. That's Thank all you. the questions. Oh.